Driving at night requires increased caution because a. Traffic moves faster at night. b. There is a larger volume of traffic at night. c. Drivers cannot see as well at night. d. Accidents occur more frequently at night. c. Drivers cannot see as well at night. Because it is dark, drivers cannot see as well at night as they can during the day. From one half hour after sunset until one half hour before sunrise, or at any other time when persons or vehicles are not visible for 500 feet, drivers must use their headlights. You may pass another vehicle? A. In a curve or on a hill because the chance is small that another vehicle is coming. B. By using the shoulder of the highway. C. If your lane is next to a solid yellow line and the passing lane is clear ahead. D. None of the above. D. None of the above. You may not pass another vehicle on a hill or in a curve because you cannot see oncoming traffic and may cause a collision. Never pass another vehicle by driving onto the shoulder of a highway. Passing another vehicle by driving over a solid yellow line is prohibited. You are waiting to turn left at a multi-lane intersection and opposing traffic is blocking your view. You should a. Accelerate rapidly when the first lane you need to cross is clear. b. Wait until you can see all the lanes you need to cross before going ahead with your turn. c. Wait for an oncoming driver to wave you across the intersection. d. Edge your car into each lane of opposing traffic as soon as it clears. b. Wait until you can see all the lanes you need to cross before going ahead with your turn. You should never start a left turn until you can see that all the lanes you need to cross are clear and that you can safely make the turn. A good rule to remember for passing is A. Pass on the right whenever possible. B. Drive with the flow of traffic and pass only as needed. C. Try to get to the front of any slow moving traffic so that you can see better. D. Always flash your lights and sound your horn to alert other drivers to your intentions. B. Drive with the flow of traffic and pass only as needed. Each time you pass another vehicle, there is an increased chance for a collision. If you are moving faster than surrounding traffic, you will have to continue passing others. Drive with the flow of traffic, within the legal speed limit, and pass only as needed. Want to issue DMV test? Go to CheatSheets.com and get your guaranteed cheat sheet. What is the first thing you should adjust, if needed, when you get into a car to drive? A. Your seat belt. B. The steering wheel. C. Your rear view mirror. D. Your seat. D. Your seat. When preparing to drive, you should first adjust your seat to ensure that you are in a comfortable position and can see the road clearly. Adjust your mirrors and steering wheel to be effective when your seat is fully adjusted. Your blind spot is the area of the road. A. You cannot see without moving your head. B. Directly behind your vehicle. C. You see in your rear view mirror. D. You see in your side mirror. A. You cannot see without moving your head. Blind spots are areas that a driver cannot see without moving their head. They can be located to the sides of and behind a vehicle. This sign means A. One way traffic. B. Two-way left turn. C. Two-way traffic. D. Minimum speed limit. A. One-way traffic.
Regulation signs regulate traffic speed and movement, displaying rules which drivers must obey. This sign tells drivers the direction in which they must drive when turning onto a one-way street. When entering a street from a driveway, you a, must drive slowly to allow approaching vehicles and pedestrians time to get out of your way. b. Must honk your horn so approaching vehicles and pedestrians know to give you room. c. Must stop and proceed only when there are no pedestrians or vehicles approaching. d. Can disregard any pedestrians if there is no sidewalk. c. Must stop and proceed only when there are no pedestrians or vehicles approaching. Always stop before entering the roadway from a driveway and yield to any approaching vehicles or crossing pedestrians. The stop should be made before crossing the sidewalk area. Failure to stop is unlawful. You are involved in an accident. You should a. Stop immediately. B. Help the injured. C. Call the police. D. All of the above. When a stop is required at an intersection and no markings appear to indicate a stop line or crosswalk, a driver. A. Is not required to stop. B. Is required to slow down to make sure crossing traffic is clear. C should stop only at a place where they can see at least 200 feet on either side, even if they have to enter the intersecting roadway. d. should stop where they have a clear view of approaching traffic before they enter the intersecting roadway. d. should stop where they have a clear view of approaching traffic before they enter the intersecting roadway. If there is no stop line or crosswalk, you should stop at the point nearest to the intersecting roadway where you can get a view of approaching traffic. You should not enter the intersecting roadway to gain a better view. You may honk your horn when you a. have to stop quickly. b. are passing another car. c. have lost control of your car. d. are passing a bicyclist. C. Have lost control of your car. One situation where it is appropriate to use your horn is if you lose control of your vehicle. In this case, sound your horn to alert other drivers. When driving near heavy trucks, other drivers and highway users must make allowances for A. The increased stopping distance required by large vehicles. B. The decreased stopping distance required by large vehicles. C. The decreased noise of larger vehicles. D. The increased speed of larger vehicles. A. The increased stopping distance required by large vehicles. When driving near heavy trucks, other drivers and highway users must make allowances for the increased stopping distance required by the large vehicles. Drivers of smaller vehicles should remain in locations where they can be seen by the driver of the large vehicle and where their view of traffic is not blocked by the vehicle. This road sign means A. Do not pass. B. Do not enter. C. No turn on red. D. Keep right. D. Keep right. This sign indicates that a divided highway begins ahead. The road will split into two one-way roadways separated by a median or divider. You must keep to the right. This road sign means A. The road ahead curves right. Slow down to the safe speed indicated. B. Divided highway begins. Slow down to the safe speed indicated. C. Merge. Slow down to the safe speed indicated. D. Winding road ahead. Slow down to the safe speed indicated. A. The road ahead curves right. Slow down to the safe speed indicated.
These signs indicate that the road curves to the right ahead and that drivers should slow down to the safe speed indicated in this case, 35 miles per hour. When a vehicle with an anti-lock braking system starts to lose traction on a slippery road, drivers should a. Pump the brakes. b. Press and hold the brake pedal. c. Press and hold the gas pedal. d. Lightly tap the brakes. b. Press and hold the brake pedal. If their vehicle loses traction on a slippery road, a driver with an anti-lock braking system ABS needs to press down hard on the brake pedal, hold it, and steer out of danger. In an emergency situation, the ABS automatically pumps the brakes at a faster rate than the driver could. Removing steady pressure from the brake pedal or pumping the brakes will disengage the ABS. You are driving on a busy street and your vehicle's accelerator sticks open. You should a. Blow your horn. b. Slam on your brakes. c. Turn on your four-way flashers. d. Turn off your ignition, taking care not to engage the steering wheel locking mechanism. d. Turn off your ignition, taking care not to engage the steering wheel locking mechanism. If your vehicle's accelerator sticks open, your vehicle will continue to maintain its speed or accelerate, even if you remove your foot from the gas pedal. Turn off the ignition, using care to move the ignition switch only far enough to stop the engine and not engage the steering wheel locking mechanism. Apply your brakes and move off the road to a safe area. A pedestrian starts to cross in front of your vehicle. You should a. Flash your lights. b. Slow down. c. Speed up and pass in front of the pedestrian. d. Stop and let the pedestrian cross. d. Stop and let the pedestrian cross. Slow down and be prepared to stop whenever you see pedestrians walking on or crossing the roadway. Be particularly careful where children are present. Always yield the right of way to a pedestrian crossing in a crosswalk. At dusk or on overcast days, you should a. Drive using your four-way flashers. b. Drive using your parking lights. c. Not turn on any vehicle lights. d. Turn on your headlights. The best way to avoid hydroplaning is to a. Keep your tires properly maintained. b. Slow down when roads are wet or slushy. c. Watch out for standing water or puddles. d. All of the above. d. All of the above. When roads are wet, cars take a longer distance to stop and may skid on quick turns. Do not use cruise control when driving under wet or icy conditions. Reduce your speed and drive with caution. When driving on major highways. A. Stay alert. B. Keep your eyes moving. C. Be ready to react to road hazards. D. All of the above. D. All of the above. It is important to stay alert on highways and be ready to react to unexpected hazards. To avoid highway hypnosis, you should avoid looking at any one thing for more than a few seconds. On a road which has no sidewalks, a pedestrian should walk on the a. side of the road which has the lightest traffic. b. same side of the road on which traffic is moving. C. Side of the road facing oncoming traffic. D. Side of the road which has the heaviest traffic. C. Side of the road facing oncoming traffic. Pedestrians should walk on the side of the road facing the traffic in the lane nearest them. When driving in fog. A. Use your parking lights. B. 
Use your low beams. C. Use your high beams. D. It makes no difference which lights you use. B. Use your low beams. You should use low beam headlights when driving in fog, rain, or snow. You must pull over to the edge of the road and allow an emergency vehicle to pass. A. Regardless of your direction. B. Only if it is following you. C. Only if it is approaching you from the opposite direction. D. None of the above. A. Regardless of your direction. You must pull over to the right edge of the road and stop for an emergency vehicle with flashing lights, regardless of whether it is approaching you from behind or from the opposite direction. This sign means A. Trucks are permitted on an upcoming narrow bridge. B. The bridge ahead is open to one-way traffic only. C. The bridge ahead is wide enough for only one car at a time. D. The bridge ahead may be too narrow to meet or pass a truck. D. The bridge ahead may be too narrow to meet or pass a truck. Warning signs are used to warn drivers about upcoming hazardous conditions and are usually yellow with black markings. This sign warns drivers that an upcoming bridge may be too narrow to meet or pass a truck and that they should be careful. When driving near a blind pedestrian who is carrying a white cane or using a guide dog, you should a. Slow down and be prepared to stop. b. Take the right of way. c. Proceed normally. d. Drive away quickly. a. Slow down and be prepared to stop. When driving near a blind pedestrian who is carrying a white cane or walking with a guide dog, you must slow down, yield the right of way, and then proceed with caution. Be prepared to stop your vehicle in order to prevent injury or danger to the pedestrian.